Hey everyone, Kyle at One Up Adventures. We kind of had this cool idea. We wanted to make our own smoke system. This is not something we're going to be selling. This is not something that we're going to be, you know, marketing in that way. We just wanted to make a video showing you how all of the parts get put together to make this system and what we used to do it. So if you wanted to make your own, you can do it. You always have a smoke system attached to your paramotor. It adds weight. What if you don't want to use it? Things start leaking, things vibrate. And with this system, only thing that stays on your paramotor is a check valve, a one-way valve, and the connection to the exhaust. So the Bite Me smoke system is kind of interesting. These are little backpacks here, and we actually put these on our front. On my left here, your right, you can see this is a fully built smoke system. The bag comes with a standard bladder, but it has an opening on the front, kind of like a, I don't know, goofy opening like that. But we didn't want that one. We wanted something where we could use the top of the bag that rather than having a screw off on the front, you can slide the top off and it's an open from the top. And we did this because it's easier to put the smoke oil in versus the front of the bag. So first, kind of got the Bite Me name. This is a bite switch. And it's just got a little switch in there and it's actually designed to be activated with your mouth. And this is a flexible piece that stays where you put it. So you can actually just keep it there. And while you're flying, you can just, it's a really, really easy to bite down and it works great. This is actually the most expensive part of the system itself. The system total will cost you about $170 to build but it's all replaceable parts, removable, and uh, you get to build it yourself in the way that you want. So bite switch comes with an extender, which we do use, as you can see, it's right here. It does come on there. Uh, I would suggest taping this, but it is quick removal. So if something were to break and you need to replace it, you can do that. Next up, we do have a pump. So uh, I tried a couple of different pumps to see what would work the best. And this one, all of this stuff, with the exception of the smoke nozzle, can be purchased on Amazon, I lied. Bite switch and smoke nozzle cannot be purchased on Amazon. The rest of it is Amazon, auto parts store, whatever you have available for you. If you actually look up air bite switch, uh, there's a company that it comes directly from them, sells it, but I found it was cheaper on Walmart. The pump that we're using is a one liter per minute pump. And this is actually running off of a 3S 1500 milliamp LiPo battery. It should last you about a full hour running. What we're using for smoke oil is actual mineral oil rather than pure smoke oil. The choice and the reason for that is because smoke oil is very, it degrades everything, it eats through a lot of stuff and it's pretty toxic. So we'd much rather use mineral oil that we're gonna be touching, it's gonna be on your body. So if it does leak, it's pretty much unscented baby oil. So this pump, it's got an inlet and an outlet. Uh, it's pretty easy to wire up. I will show you on this one how we did that. But this is the pump, comes with the instructions. It's really easy. And uh, so far it's been reliable and it gets us one liter a minute. So I did test that where I filled up the bag and I ran uh, two liters through it to see how long it would take. And it took about two minutes and three seconds. So it's pretty much spot on and uh, it produces a ton of smoke. Most smoke systems can hold a liter, maybe a liter and a half. If you really want to, this one can hold two and a half liters. And the one that it comes with, can hold up to three liters. XT60 connector, this is what you're going to need to wire the switch up and of course connect the battery. And then what we did is we actually added, added a dual redundancy. So you want to have, and you should have a check valve, at least one. So we have this check valve here and this goes on the engine along with our quick release. So this quick release is right here. This is what connects to your frame. And this is what will be, Sorry, wrong one. The male end will be on your frame. The female end will be on your person or on your bag. And you'll be able to reach back and just click it in. And when you're done flying, you just simply unclick it. And that's the only thing you have to do. This is a, a stopper. So when you have this connected, the fuel isn't leaking out of this end. And you have a one-way valve on your frame that you'll be seeing right now that will stop it from backflowing back into the bag and also your engine puts out pressure. So with that pressure from the exhaust and the engine pushing it, it will keep the smoke oil from back feeding into the system when you're not using it. Last two things, this might be needed, might not be needed. It just depends on the size of tubing that you use. As you can tell, I haven't really mentioned tubing sizes and what you need exactly for that because each one is different. The only one that I really recommend is, this is actually high temp fuel line. You, any auto parts store will sell this. And this is 3 16 fuel line. And you're gonna need a smoke nozzle because that's generally the hardest part of all of this to find is a smoke nozzle. 
This is a smoke nozzle from Aviator PPG. This is what we used way back in the day uh, for our smoke systems, and these were actually all uh, custom made for us. They still have these, and buy them there, that's what they're actually for. And this fits right over it, along with a zip tie, and then you have a small heat sink there to keep it from melting, and that's why we use this thick, higher temp tubing here. And we are using this, this is actually a vacuum line connector, but on our system here, it goes from our bag to our pump because of the difference in size between the bag line and the fuel pump. Rather than trying to get a bunch of goofy connectors, we just simply bought this for, I think, $4 or $5 at O'Reilly's. And you trim it down to fit your tubing size needs, and it fits right here, and it works perfectly, and it doesn't leak. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all you need. Last thing, when you buy the injector nozzle, the actual smoke nozzle itself, it is gonna come with a rivet nut. If you don't have a rivet nut gun, the kit does come with instructions on how to install this using a bolt and a wrench. You can do it like that. I would highly recommend a rivet nut gun. They're about $20 on Amazon and they come in a bunch of different shapes and sizes. And I would recommend that to install this into your exhaust. It voids your warranty. The pros, uh, you, you have smoke now and it's a lot of fun, it's removable and it's really not all that expensive relatively speaking compared to what we do in flying. But some of the cons are, of course, you're drilling into an exhaust and that can be an issue. Uh, we haven't had any issues in the past. We actually didn't have many issues with the exhaust drilling into it in terms of the elbow, but the bigger portion of it is going to be your silencer, not the tune pipe, the silencer. We have packing in the silencer. It's fluffy. You're putting smoke through the system and eventually the silencer packing will go from yay tall to this tall so your engine does get a little bit louder and you're going to want to repack your silencer sooner than later but i guess that's the price you pay for having a little fun and uh it's well worth it at the end of the day so i'm just going to show you the system now so we have our backpack which this is just a runner's backpack you don't have to get this one this is just the one that we have found that works i put a little slit in the bottom for the actual feeder tube to go in and the bag just slides right into it. And the way that we wear this is it just goes over, sits right on your chest and you buckle the bottom strap, put it on before you put a helmet on just like you would a radio harness. And now we have our smoke system and our bite switch would actually be just fed up. <laughs> it's not connected so it's a little weird. It would be fed up through here. So if you don't wanna use it, you just put it away. And when you want it before you wanna use it, that's it. So you got something in your mouth while you fly. So that's the bag. As far as the actual smoke system itself, using this bag, we ran this line here to the motor, which in, black tube is out. And like I said, this goes to the bottom of the bag. Now for most people, the harder part is going to be wiring this. You can solder it, you can twist them together, use wire nuts, whatever works for you. You basically put the switch in between either one, ground or positive, and you run that right to the motor. So you have a, I guess you could call it a bridge where the switch goes to let the power go from the battery to the motor. And that is it. I will actually uh, plug this in so you can hear it. I'll be very really quiet. You'll be able to hear the motor run. Let's see if I can lift it up and get some out of there. And it doesn't work right now because it's a check valve. So you can hear the motor running and the reason it's not going, which is, a, this is a good thing. So if you unplug this and your kid decides to make this a chew toy and you click it, you see the motor running, but there's nothing happening. Even if I tip the bag up, nothing is happening. And the reason being is because this tube at the end is an air block. So this does not activate until I put this in here. And if I put this in here and I sprayed Travis, he'd be really angry and I want to come to work tomorrow. So. I won't do that, but that's pretty much how this system is put together. Uh, you will see a photo here or a video of all of this installed in the bag and how simple it actually works. If you guys have questions, we're gonna try to link as much as we can in the description so you guys can find some of these parts that are needed. Check valves comes in pack of two, one-way valves, they're, they're everywhere. 
Uh, same thing with the connectors and batteries. Uh, this is actually windshield wiper line that you put in your car. That's what this, this line is here. Um, and one thing we didn't tell you, this is actually the mineral oil. We left it in the bag because we wanted to see if it degraded the bag and uh, nothing, it's been in there for about a week. So everything's been good there and we'll link everything down in the description for you guys to find and uh, go have fun, fly and smoke out your friends. Bite me. I like that. I just came up with that out of nowhere. So this is how we're going to install the actual injector itself. So we have the injector here, our rivnut, nut, and our tubing. So this is where the one-way valve goes and the connector from your actual smoke system. So this will get mounted however you see fit. This is just how I like to do it. So it's easy to get to and you can access it without actually having to take off the motor and have somebody do it for you. You can do everything while you're in the paramotor system itself. Remember, this is a, a one-way here, plus you have your check valve, so the backflow from the paramotor isn't gonna go through the tube. So we're gonna put it on now. You wanna make sure the black tube is going up towards the exhaust, and wherever you're going to be putting your injector, so whether you go up here, I wouldn't suggest going that close to the cylinder, I'd go a little bit further down, uh, about four to six inches down from the actual exhaust. So we're just gonna figure it's about right there. And we can just judge, judge everything based on that. So I'm gonna roll this down just a hair. And now we're gonna put this on. One thing you will notice is every paramotor frame is different. So it's gonna be kind of up to you and how you wanna do this part. You want this loose, so that, that is actually pretty important. You want this tube that actually feeds the smoke oil you want this tube to be a little loose because your engine vibrates. So if this is sturdy and it vibrates, it will eventually you know, wear itself through. So we're just gonna leave it a little loose. So this way, if it's sitting here just like this, as the engine vibrates, this tube can move. Now this is your connection point. If you wanted to, you could leave it loose like this, but I'd rather have it a fixed point. So when you go to install your other end of the smoke tube, you can just reach out and click it on. And this is on Travis's, so he might wanna move it and he can do that. So now that that's on there, you can see it's still wiggly. So what I'm gonna actually do is put another zip tie around the bottom. It won't squeeze the tubing because it actually is on the grommet of the check valve. One more zip tie on the bottom of this just to keep it in place. And then I'm gonna take this tube and I'm actually going to zip tie this tube to the actual frame itself. Not tight, you don't wanna restrict the flow. You could put a standoff on it, but you don't really need it. It's really going to be up to you. Now this can stay permanently mounted along with the smoke nozzle to your paramotor. Now all we have to do is install the actual injector itself. For this particular nozzle, you need a 17 64th drill bit. I am using a cobalt bit, but I'm gonna drill a pilot hole. Now, if you have one of these, which is a rivet nut gun, about $20 and extremely handy for this, and other uses around your house, it comes with a tapering bit, which actually shows you exactly the size that you need. So you can choose to either use a drill bit or a tapering bit, whichever one suits your needs or whichever one you have lying around. About right there. All I'm gonna do, no, I don't have a punch to start my hole. I know. <laughs> I do, but not here. There we go. Now you can either use your tapering bit or your 1764 drill bit. In my case, I'm gonna use the 1764 drill bit. As you can see, I'll hold this up. It is the exact same size as our riv nut. Now this is really easy. I finish off this, this hole here, and then I put the riv nut in and install my smoke nozzle. And we'll talk about the smoke nozzle. After you do this, use your tapering bit if you have one, just to get it in there. Just to smooth that out a little bit, makes it look a little nicer. Now once we get to that point, we're going to use our riv nut on our riv nut gun. Keep spider webs. This is way easier than the old school method. You want to make sure this is straight or perfectly on the hole. You don't want it crooked because it'll pinch it crooked in a goofy direction. You want it as straight as possible. So we're going to get it in there, hold it firmly against it, squeeze, and don't just squeeze on it really hard. Nice and progressive. Okay. Now we unscrew it. Okay. Now we have a solid, well-installed rivet nut that should not be coming loose. This is the important part. You have 
on your injector nozzle, it comes out in a particular direction. It doesn't just shoot straight out so it hits the other side. You want this going downstream or with the exhaust. You don't want it facing up because let's just say you use it by accident, it's going to shoot towards your motor or into your actual engine. We want it facing downstream. So we're gonna tighten it as such. I would recommend making a mark on the actual piece itself so you know which way is down. So you can see your injector nozzle here. And you can see I made a little scratch mark on it so I know where the injector nozzle is pointing when I screw it on. You can use high temp Loctite on this as well. We gotta see if this lines up. I'm just going to screw it on. The smoke is actually pointing in this direction, which is perfect. All you have to do is tighten it up about an eighth of a turn and it will be pointing right downstream. So we're gonna do that now. There we go. It is pointing directly downstream and your nozzle is installed. We're gonna put that on there, beautiful. Now look, we actually have the proper tools. We have a safety wire spinner. Now you can use whatever, but uh, after our 436 try, we found some safety wire. So this actually works much better. We're going to do two wraps around it. I won't screw this one up much. Now you can twist these just a little bit to start it. Now I'm gonna use my safety wire gun as in my safety wire tool. Squeeze that down, hold this together, spin it tight, drop it. And then once I get to here, I don't, it, this wire can break, so I'm just gonna give it a couple little twists till it's snug, that's good. And then I'm going to simply cut the wire, leave a little excess, and then bend this around and make it look pretty. Now it's pretty and it's done. Now you have some wiggle room and this beautiful, brand new, never ran Moster has smoke on it. <laughs> so we're gonna put our smoke pack on. So I do like to leave the center strap buckled over your head and you just set it up for yourself. And then this one, because we had a more military style backpack, it had a much bigger clip, but you're sitting on this and it's behind your back. So I didn't want it to be big and bulky behind me. So. Now I reach around behind myself, clip it on. This doesn't really move. Now, what I like to do is take this and just put it in the top for now. And uh, I can put my helmet on and put my paramotor on my back. So now that we have all this figured out, we just gotta know where to run this. And each frame, each harness, a little different. So I'm running mine through the side of my paramotor right here. Now I just have this one tube. Reach back, find where your actual hooking point is. I know where mine is. It's actually right over there. Push on it. Hear a click, feel a click, tug. It's all good. Now I just got that. That's pretty much it. Now you're good to go. Go fly. <laughs>